What's going on everyone? Welcome back. It's Brian with Equipment World. I'm here with Raf Brakowski and we are coming at you from Con Expo 2023 at the Komatsu booth. And we are here to talk about this monster back here, the D71 PXI Dozer. Did I get all that right? Correct, yeah, the Dash 24. So this machine is our wide spec version, 53,000 pound, 36 inch shoe, offers maximum flotation. It is our largest HST dozer that we offer. This machine is the same size class as the D65-18. Okay. But we really took the voice of the customer and listened to what they had to say. The super slant nose design offers supreme visibility inside the cab for the operator. And that's phenomenal. There's no one else in the industry that can match you guys on visibility. Once you get in the cab, it is difficult to adjust otherwise. <laughs> Absolutely, it's a game changer. Uh, just being able to see fully around you 360 and the great visibility to the end bits and even the top of the blade. And this is a solid machine. It's got a ton of power, phenomenal visibility, but the really important thing is that little I on the end of the name. What does the I stand for? So I stands for intelligent. Intelligent Machine Control was released 10 years ago by Komatsu. Oh. Last Con Expo, we introduced IMC 2.0. And what is 2.0 and why is that such a big deal? So some of the key features of 2.0 is the proactive dozing. Proactive dozing maps its terrain as it tracks across it. And, and just to clarify, what's, what's unique about the way you guys measure grade, it's not measuring from the actual blade, it's measuring from the track. Correct. So this dozer knows exactly where the grade is after you make your last pass. Correct. And then what does the dozer do with that information? It does their calculations internally, and then it understands that for the next pass, how much material has been left behind the last pass. And that's key. I actually got to run this machine at Komatsu's facility uh, just a few months back. And up until I ran this machine, had you told me a machine was gonna be able to slot those on its own, I would have said, no way, absolutely not but this machine through its learning abilities was actually more productive in a slot dozing application than I was as a seasoned operator. I, I feel like I could say that now that I'm a pretty seasoned operator and this thing was being more productive than I was. Can you kind of explain why that is? What's making that happen? So the machine understands the operator's input and using 3D GPS automatics, we're able to make operators more efficient by using less input from the operator himself. And so the machine's learning so is it learning about the material that you're pushing while you're pushing it? It, un it? it understands what kind of material and it can fill up the blade as much as it can uh, to really utilize its power to weight ratio. And that was what I really noticed. The reason it was more productive than I was, at least in my opinion, was as an operator, you're constantly reacting to what the machine's doing and then you're adjusting your inputs accordingly. Versus when you turn on the intelligent machine control, the machine instantaneously knows exactly how much track slippage it's getting. It knows exactly how much pressure is on the blade and it's able to immediately make those control input changes versus me as an operator, I'm always operating in the past. Correct. That was fascinating to me. Yeah. Raf, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we are now standing over here in front of the HB365 LC-3, and I'm here with Kurt Monsini. Did I get that right? You got it right, Brian. Product manager for excavators for Komatsu. And this is a hybrid machine, correct? This is a hybrid machine. Now, I'm going to tell you, as, as an operator, you're adding all of this stuff to my excavator that already works fine. Why do I need to mess around with hybrid technology? Great question. Actually, we're not necessarily really adding a whole lot of stuff. What we're going to do... We're gonna capture wasted energy. So typically that energy that we would uh, create is the heat going over the relief, you know, as we, as we uh, decelerate to a stop on swing. Okay. We're gonna capture that as electrical energy. So it's, you're really capturing, is it just the swing energy or are you capturing energy from other functions on the machine? No, on this one, we're just gonna capture the swing. We, okay. get, we get the most benefit in terms of energy absorption on, on swing. Sure. Okay, now we're gonna save that in a capacitor so that, you know, we quick charge, quick discharge, uh, and then we're gonna power swing. Okay. Okay, now what the really nice thing about that is, is we can be selfish now, okay? I don't need to share hydraulic oil with swing and boom and arm and bucket. So just to specify, this is an electric swing motor. There is no hydraulics in the swing component? There is no hydraulics in the swing component, so it's an electric swing motor. So we isolate that electrically. So I'm digging, we've got a bucket full, I've got to get power to the, uh, the boom. I got to get the boom up. I got to get the arm out and I've got to swing at the same time. Absolutely. Okay. A lot so of now, hydraulic power in those. A lot of hydraulic power, but now I don't have to share hydraulic power with swing. So yes. I got to run swing 
electrically from the capacitor, and now all that extra energy that would have gone to powering swing, I boom up faster, arm out faster, into the truck and dump. So for me on the front lines, you just reduce cycle time. We just reduce cycle time. We're typically seeing five to 10%. Wow. We have customers that run the hybrid that are actually surprised. We get the term snappy. Yes. Quick response. They actually like cycle time. Early on, hybrids were associated with, back in the automotive days, the Prius, the Odyssey. It was all sure. about saving fuel. Yes. Now they say, you know, the fuel is okay, it's nice. I'm seeing anywhere from 10 to 20% fuel savings, but he says what we really like is it's snappy. I'm getting more work done because I don't have to share oil with swing, so now I get that faster cycle time. That was the perfect way to talk about that because so many manufacturers love to come at it from the angle of the fuel efficiency standpoint, the fuel economy. And in the dirt industry, Let's be honest, how much are we really monitoring fuel economy? It's it's more about the production. Absolutely. And you're talking 10 up to 10% in, in increased production. Up to 10% on increased production, and we've seen up to 20% on fuel. Unbelievable. So we idle at 700 RPM, ultra low idle. Wow. Now the other thing we do unique is on this is we actually have a motor generator sandwiched between the engine and the hydraulic pumps. So since we idle at this ultra low RPM, which helps us save fuel, if I command a control and I need that RPM to come up, I will take power from the capacitor. I will turn that generator into a motor and then what it does is it gets that RPM up to operating speed, the same as a regular excavator at a higher idle. So let me ask you this. Obviously, newer technology, you've got some additional features. This is gonna be a little spendier than a, a traditional hydraulic excavator. What kind, of, what kind of timeline am I looking at for, for a real return on my investment? There? That's a great question. So right now we're looking at about two years. We've had hybrid, we've been in the hybrid excavator business for quite some time, but we were premature. Fuel was about $2 a gallon. Sure. I save 20% uh, on fuel. I don't save that much a day. Now, with fuel getting more expensive, uh, we're looking at about a two year payback. That's not bad at all. Now, is that really purely from a fuel standpoint? Are we, are we really? Is, are we adding in the component of the, the possible increased production and the additional revenue you're going to make there? Are we really talking from just Not the fuel? Not necessarily. Thing? We're looking at it on a very simple basis. It's the added savings on fuel uh, should pay back the premium and the hybrid components in about two years. So if you're going to add in the revenue component, I'm just saying, yeah. we don't have a figure because that's going to vary on job, but you're talking under a two year potential payback on your return. If we add that extra incentive, absolutely, absolutely. under two years. Interesting. Now, the other interesting thing is that, you know, if you're interested in carbon neutrality, if your business is, is, is sensitive on that, uh, you're also going to be in that 10 to 20 percent on carbon reduction in carbon. Yeah. Interesting. So now here's the kicker. I have my tech in my shop and he's used to working on hydraulic systems. What's the maintenance look like on, a, on something like this where we're now adding in a, a pretty serious electrical component? There's really, there's really no additional extra maintenance. You know, it's like the, it's like the electric car industry. It's electric motors. There's no, there's no fluids to change. Uh, all the cables, the, the voltage cables are all orange. Uh, you know, we do have service tools. We do tra uh, uh, service training. You know, we have to discharge the capacitor, but really there is no additional maintenance required. Actually, we reduce maintenance because now we don't have to uh, worry about the hydraulic motor on swing. So it's really not the big, scary, dramatic thing that we all think it is. It's really not the scary, dramatic thing. It's really operates in the background behind the operator. All he feels is a little snappier performance. And when the fueler comes in, we're going to put a little bit less fuel in. That's fantastic. Now is a good time to mention that if you want to see more content like this, subscribe and click the bell icon so you can see when we post more videos.